Hello everyone, welcome to Miss Jess Suggests, a video segment from the Ames Free Library. I'm Miss Jess, the Youth Services Librarian here at the Ames Free Library, and every few weeks I'm going to sit down with you right here and recommend some great new reads. Every episode is something new for readers from pre-K right through middle school, so stay tuned for some good stuff. Today's best books you've never read are from my picture book collection. So when you think of picture books, I know you think they're really for the little, little ones, um, preschool, toddlers, but it doesn't mean that you might not enjoy the story, even though you're older. So um, I've tried to get a little variety in here and there should be something just for everyone. So I do have to mention, there are so, so, so many picture books out in the world and so many picture books in my library. And everyone has different, um, different opinions about what makes it the best. Is it the words? Is it the pictures? Is it because it rhymes? Um, and of course, I can't talk about all of those books in my picture book collection. So really, these are just the best picture books that I think that people don't find often enough. So maybe we'll call this Miss Jess's favorite picture books that you've never read. And we'll start with the youngest readers or listeners. We have 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes by Mem Fox. Illustrations by Helen Oxenberry. This book is of interest to the toddler and maybe pre-K level. 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes is a super sweet story full of these little round faced cherubs like this little cutie pie on the cover. Um, and these little the characters are from all around the world. Now there's not so much a storyline in this book as much as it's um, like descriptions of the characters who are in the book. Um, but there's a lot of repetition and a lot of rhyming, which makes it really, really great for those littlest listeners. And the pictures are really gentle, but very friendly. Um, like I said, those little babies love to look at other babies and this book is full of other babies. So um, tons of appeal for those very littlest ones. Now for an older one, for maybe a beginning reader who wants to test their skills, uh, the repetition in this book helps reinforce um, fluency for a new reader. So this is a great choice for someone um, like that. And um, it's a really sweet story. Who doesn't love babies? But uh, it might have extra appeal for any of those older readers who maybe have a new baby in the house as well. Two other books that I wanna mention that are perfect for this audience, just, just right for babies and toddlers with those little bouncy rhythms throughout the story are um, John Butler's book, Can You Growl Like a Bear? and Flip Flap Fly by Phyllis Root. For our pre-K and young elementary readers, let's check out Little Quack's New Friend. This book is by Lauren Thompson with pictures by Derek Anderson. This book is absolutely fun for all ages. And for reading level, I'm gonna go with a pretty, maybe a confident um, first grade reader up through about third grade. So Little Quack is our fluffy little friend here on the cover. Little Quack is actually the star of a whole series of books, but I love this book in particular. He is the smallest of five ducklings, and he spends a lot of time playing with his siblings. Well, one day a little frog pops up in their pond and he wants to play too. Little Quack is the only duckling at first who will let him join in to play. Um, but so the book goes on to chronicle their day of splashy, hoppy, muddy fun with these two new friends. But this storyline also has a nice message of acceptance and maybe not judging a book by its cover. And there is a happy resolution with everyone um, having a new friend by the end. So with all the quacking and the ribbiting, there's a lot of fun to be had in this book. For a couple of other books that are just pure fun for these young readers, you might check out Mr. Tiger Goes Wild by Peter Brown and Mousetronaut by astronaut Mark Kelly. These books are also beautiful and they are fun and they are pretty sure to elicit a few giggles. And now for something sometimes unexpected in a picture book, a nice long in-depth story for older readers. Just because a book has big beautiful pictures doesn't mean it has to be for little ones. So let's check out The Widow's Broom by Chris Van Allsburg. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, you probably know The Polar Express or maybe Jumanji all of Chris Van Allsburg's books they get longer and more involved. Sometimes they have a little risk or peril in them. Um, so these are best for elementary readers starting around first grade, 
The reading level definitely comes up a notch also, so these are going to be good for independent readers for probably third through fifth grade. Now, The Widow's Broom has a fall Halloween-y feel, but it's a great year-round story. It's got, um, I think, shades of the old Sorcerer's Apprentice tale that maybe you're familiar with from Fantasia. Of course, you've heard that witch's brooms have magic in them. That's how they fly. But you might not know that eventually that magic can wear off. Well, what happens to an old broom that can't fly anymore? One morning, a young widow goes out in her garden and finds a witch whose broom has failed and they've crash landed in her garden. So the widow helps the witch, she brings her in until she heals. And when the witch is ready to leave, she just discards her old broom that can't fly anymore and she flies off with a friend. Well, just because the broom can't fly anymore does not mean it is completely out of magic. So the broom sticks around, the widow keeps it. For the most part, the broom is kind of helpful around the house. But when there's trouble in the area, the neighbors want her to destroy the broom. Well, as far as picture books go, this is kind of a long story, but it's not too long to read in one sitting. So you will have to read it and find out if she gets to keep her broom or what else might happen. All of Chris Van Allsburg's books, as I mentioned, are nice, long, meaty stories. They're great for those older readers, um, as are any picture books by Patricia Polacco. But there are two others that I highly recommend. One is called The Loathsome Dragon. This book you can find in our folktale collection, and it's a retelling of a traditional story, uh, retold by David Wiesner and Kim Kang. And for another longer story, but maybe with less magic or fantasy, we have um, One Cool Friend by Tony Bezeo and David Small. All right, as I said, there are too many to just pick a few books. So of course, here are some bonus books. My bonus books today are two very specific kinds of books. First up, I have a fable with a moral at the end of it. This first book is called Seven Blind Mice. And this is a traditional tale um, retold by Ed Young. Best for kindergarten through fourth grade. Um, it can be really good even to use with older students to maybe make you think a little bit. This particular story is a retelling of a simple fable from India. And it's about looking at things differently, maybe seeing things from a different perspective and learning to step back and see the big picture before you maybe make up your mind. So each of seven mice set out separately as they go to figure out what this strange new thing is that has appeared by their pond. They are blind mice. They can't see what this is. They are small. This thing that is now here is big. So each one of them can only discover a small part of what this big thing is. And each one rushes back to tell its companions what this thing is that they think that they've discovered. Well, of course, each one has felt a different part of this large thing. And so they have wildly different opinions on what they think it is. And it isn't until the last little mouse sets out on the last day and they discover the whole truth. And then they can settle their arguments. Well, alongside this story itself, readers can enjoy the cut paper illustrations. Um, these are actually pretty great detailed pictures set on this striking black background. Um, of course, you can, the mice are all a different color and they each go out on a different day of the week. So you can work on reinforcing those skills as well. Um, and of course, as you go through readers, you might delight in finding out the answer, kind of seeing the big picture of the whole before the little mice in the story do. So that's kind of a fun element of it as well. So if you like the sound of this book, you might also try a couple of other books with some little morals. The first one I recommend is called The Tale of Two Beasts by Fiona Robertson. Um, it's got a little message in it, but it's also a fun and silly story as you go through. And the other is Cookies, Bite-Sized Life Lessons, which is less of a story to read and more of little, um, almost just little morals, but illustrated with some lovely illustrations and, um, and put in the context of cookies that we can all understand. So Cookies, Bite-Sized Life Lessons by Amy Kraus, Kraus Rosenthal and illustrations in that book done by Jane Dyer. And our second bonus book is another type of book. I said I had two different kinds. This one is wordless books. Um, just as it sounds, these books do not have any words, but that does not mean that there is not a story to follow. So today I'm sharing Where's Walrus by Stephen Savage. 
Um, this is a wordless book, so I guess we don't have a reading level, but it's going to be fun for maybe some observant pre-K readers or browsers um, through about third or fourth grade. This book is a just for fun hide and seek type story. So we open with uh, Walrus. In fact, where is he? Walrus giving readers a cheeky little wink here before he scooches out the wide open front gates of the zoo. Well, from there you can follow him as he explores the city and he's usually just one step ahead of this poor zookeeper whose job it is to track him down again and bring him back to the zoo. So you will easily spot walrus on each page, but you are in on the secret because the zookeeper cannot find him. But um, it's pretty much pure fun, start to finish, um, all the way through a silly twist at the end of the story. We do have a quite a few other wordless books in our collection, so if this one sounds good to you and you want to check out some others, you might try Chalk by Bill Thompson. That is a very cool story, does involve a dinosaur. And Wave by Susie Lee. I hope you'll swing by the library to check out these great reads. And you can feel free to call the library or shoot us an email for personalized recommendations. Check back soon to see my next video for some more suggestions. Till then, be well and read well.